Hey everybody, Murray here from VINS. I'm the Science Outreach Educator and I want to welcome you to your 2020 VINS Online Science Symposium Raptor Enclosure Tour. So I'm going to take you through our non-releasable exhibit ambassadors. You can see we have our golden eagle in the background perched up there. She is very large and very beautiful. So I'm going to take you through a couple of them, introduce you to them, and tell you a bit about why they're here as well as what they are like in the wild and here at Vins. So enjoy. Here we have our first raptor of our enclosure tour and I'm sure that many of you know what this one is. This is one of our bald eagles. We actually have two. We have a male and we have a female and I cannot tell them apart because they are very difficult to tell apart unless you are weighing them, which I am not going to do. So bald eagles, they actually like to eat fish. They are fishers. And so you'll find them a lot near open water, open lakes, coastlines, rivers. You'll find a lot of them in New England. Their population has rebounded since the 1980s when a chemical called DDT was negatively impacting their population along with the peregrine falcon population. So both raptor species have made a huge comeback. Our bald eagles are both close to 20 years old, which is pretty amazing. And they're both, besides that we know their age, they are both adults. So bald eagles actually don't get their white heads until their fifth year of life. So it's like a badge of honor that they survive that long. And that's pretty old for a wild raptor. So before they get their, their bald or white head, they are brown with kind of white modeling on their wings. And I always like to show their talons, which you can't see too well right now, but they've got incredibly large, incredibly sharp talons, that huge, huge beak. They are very, very impressive predators. Here we have come to our peregrine falcon enclosure and you can see that it is full of rocks and ledges and all those things because peregrine falcons, they nest on cliff sides or even on the sides of buildings. So that's why here in their enclosure you can see all of these things that replicate cliffs. So. Back there, that is our newest resident. He came to us just a few weeks ago. He was found in Chittenden, Vermont, so we named him Chittenden. And he was found on the side of the road, probably hit by a car, and he's blind in one of his eyes. So he cannot be released because all diurnal daytime raptors, they rely on their ability to see their prey in order to survive. So because he does not have vision in both of his eyes, he can't be released. And this one here, Fairly, came to us in 2017 with an injury to the left wrist, so does not have full flight ability. Now, peregrine falcons, as some of you may know, are the fastest land animal in the world. They can reach speeds up to 200, over 200 miles per hour when they are hunting, which is extraordinarily impressive. They will hunt their prey out of the air as they are flying. So they are looking for birds, pigeons, things like that. And then they will get above them and a little ahead of them and dive down at them at such high speeds that it just knocks their prey right out. Here we are at our Eastern Screech Owl enclosure. And this is a special treat because usually the gray morph is not visible 
He definitely likes to hide, does not always like to be seen by the public, but since we're close to the public right now, he is out and about, and you can see they're both there on that snag. So eastern screech owls, they can be found all over North America. There's an eastern and western population. They look relatively the same. There are gray morphs and red morphs in the western population also. Uh, western is just slightly bigger, so they're really beautiful birds. You can tell they're very alert right now because they are standing very straight with those ear tufts sticking up. So you can see in their enclosure, it's designed for them to have a lot of hiding spots and they are cavity nesters. So that's why back here you can see we have that little nest box for them and a lot of snags with some holes in them. So those are two eastern screech owls. They both sustained injuries to their left wings, so that is why they are here with us. They are not fully flighted birds. Here we have our two turkey vultures, and she, right now, is getting some sun on her feathers. Turkey vultures love to enjoy the sunshine, so that's what she is doing down there. So turkey vultures are also scavengers. They're not technically raptors because they do not have sharp talons on their feet. And also, they don't really hunt for food. What they do is they will fly around on those warm air currents called thermals and they will soar and they will glide and they will wait to smell something rotting. That is how they find their food. They eat carrion, which is a dead carcass, and they find it by the smell. And they can smell very, very well. They can smell from a mile or more away, and that's how they locate their next meal. So oftentimes you'll see a group or a kettle of turkey vultures flying around together. So if you see one soaring in one spot, you know that there's probably something dead down there that they are looking for. And a really distinguishing factor of a turkey vulture is that red bald head. They've evolved to not have feathers on their heads because it allows them to dig their entire head into whatever they are eating and bring it out and their feathers are not covered in the goo of whatever is inside that they were eating. So it allows them to be a little bit more sanitary while feasting on dead animals. Our final birds on our raptor enclosure tour will be the snowy owls. So this here is our female snowy owl. We like to call her Snowy, and she's been with us for quite some time. She was actually an education bird that you might see in programs uh, with the environmental educators, but then she kind of got over that role, and so she's been on exhibit ever since. So snowy owls, they are an arctic owl, which means they live way, way, way up north where it is quite cold year round. Actually in the summertime in the breeding season, it's manageable, but there are a lot of bugs and things up there. So not very hospitable to humans, but these owls love it. There are ample lemmings and things for them to eat. So what they'll do is they will migrate down from the Arctic in the winter months because it gets too cold for them and their main food source starts to disappear and that's going to be those lemmings. And so they'll migrate down along but still stay in areas that it's very very cold so up in the northeast and just really in far North America because they need those cold temperatures because they have so many feathers. So we have our female snowy owl here and then we have our male. His name is LaGuardia because he was found at LaGuardia Airport. 
And so you can see how white he is, stark white, whereas our female Snowy, she has black speckles all over her. Both of them are on the ground because, as you may imagine, up in the Arctic, there are not a lot of trees for them to perch on. So they do prefer being on the ground and they will actually build their nests on the ground as well. And you can see he's got those amazing yellow eyes and look at those big, big feathered feet covered in feathers because as I said, they spend so much time on the ground. So that helps to insulate them or keep them warm. So this concludes our 2020 Science Symposium tour of the exhibit birds here at VINS. I want to thank you all so, so much for participating in the Science Symposium. Even though we couldn't have it this year on campus, we want to thank you guys for your support and your enthusiasm and being scientists in your community. It is so important. So on behalf of all of the staff and the birds and everyone here at VINS, thank you all for your support and for joining us for your online science symposium as well. We're so sorry you couldn't be here with us at the Nature Center, but summer is on its way and hopefully we'll get to see some of you in the summer months. So again, on behalf of everyone here at VINS and my great horned owl friend who's right there. We hope you guys have a great summer and thanks for everything that you do. Bye-bye.